Hey yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Jesse Keegan and your girlfriend Elongo and we are Funny and Jesse. So right about now we're gonna do another reaction video but before we get into the reaction guys I want to say thank you so much for subscribing. You guys are the super amazing people. You know we're almost getting to 20,000 subscribers. We're only like 300. 300? Yeah, I mean 300 and, something. 300 and something subscribers man and this is a milestone. You guys are super amazing. Thank you so much. And if you need anything for us to react to, just let us know in the comment section below and we're going to do it for you. So today we're going to do a reaction that was suggested by somebody. And this one right here was, um, I can't even remember the name. But anyway. The title of the video? Yes, the title is the most convincing factor for non-Muslims to accept Islam. So without any further ado, let's get it. The next question is from Muhammad Salah. Yemen. Dr. Zakir, how are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm fine. If Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was not the last of the prophets and messengers, you would have been our prophet at this age. Astaghfirullah. May God bless you and increase your likeness and may God combine you with the prophets and friends in paradise, God willing. Amen. My question is, what is the most moving and convincing thing I can use to persuade non-Muslim people to make them accept Islam. The brother asked a question that what is the most important and logical way that I can persuade a non-Muslim to accept Islam. Before he asked the question, he said that if Prophet Muhammad was in the last messenger, he would consider me to be a prophet in this age. Astaghfirullah, this is totally wrong. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it is mentioned in the hadith of Tirmidhi, hadith number 3686, where the beloved Prophet said that if there was a messenger going to be after me, it would be Umar al Khattab. Umar, may Allah be pleased with him. And you know, he was the second caliph of Islam. Of course, we know that the prophethood has ended. As Allah says in the Quran in Surah Azab, chapter 33, verse number 40, that Prophet Muhammad, Maqana Muhammadun Aba Ahadim Mirjalukum, that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is not the father of any of you men, Walaki Rasulullah, but is the messenger of Allah. And he is the Khatmun Nabin, he is the seal of the prophets. The Prophet has ended, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is the last and final messenger. And but natural, as the Prophet said, after him, if anyone would have been the Prophet, Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him. And there are various Sahabas. Today, no human being, not even I, are anywhere close to any of the Sahabas. Leave aside the Khulfa Rashidin, not to talk about Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him. Even the Sahabas, 124,000 Sahabas, no one today, not even me, nowhere are we close, even 1% to the Sahabas. The level that they are, that the best generation is the generation which was living at the time of the Prophet. Regarding your second thing that you did dua for me and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he accept your dua and I do that dua too. That may he put me in janitor for those in the company of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Ambiyas and the Khulfa Rashidin. And I do that dua and I'd like to thank you for the dua. Regarding your main question that what is the best way to convince a persuade a non-Muslim to accept Islam? There are various reasons that the non-Muslims accept Islam and the most common and the best reason is Tawheed, oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what the survey said. My reply to the first question, the survey done in Mannheim University in Germany, that the people who are the most satisfied are the Muslims. And the reason is Tawheed. The oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the concept of God in Islam is unique. Though all the religions basically believe in monotheism. But Tawheed is not merely monotheism. It is far above that. Besides believing in one God, we should also worship him and no one else. And if you hear my talk on concept of God in major world religions, I've given a section of the talk on Tawheed. Toy the Rububiya, Toy the Rasma Sifat, and Toy the Libada. And we Muslims are not supposed to worship anyone but 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you worship anyone, that's called a shirk, which is the major sin. So the maximum non-Muslim that they love is about the aspect of Tawheed. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who's supposed to be worshipped. And he's alone. He doesn't have any partners. He's the most wise. He's the most knowledgeable. That is the number one. Then we have Salah. Then we have other aspects. For more details, you can refer to my cassette on concept of God in major world religions. What do you think? Um, on this one, like, uh, if, if somebody asked me, was the, uh, what do you call this, was the most convincing factor to non-Muslim? I mean, what's the easiest way to convince a non-Muslim to become Muslim? Of course, what he said is really uh, applicable also. I mean, oneness, you know. Um, of, I mean, his, um, his opinion is actually good and I like it because the fact that you see the oneness in there only just, I mean, the whole thing is about just um, there's only one God. and on, I mean, there's only one God that we worship and that's the only one, you understand? That already... Uh, justifies or maybe gives uh, somebody else uh, a leeway to just become you know to be able to I mean being curious also to just be part of that kind of you know uh, community and stuff like that okay on oneness uh, what he just said according to my own opinion is more like the way they are so united and then like you see how the Muslims have this thing of, you know, just trying to help each other, you understand? Moving in one direction, you understand? Not just moving into different pathways, there is just, just one direction and I feel that is kind of really unique and then um, that's why you say like most of the people are really satisfied with, with, with being just, by them being, uh, being in that religion, you understand? So but if somebody asked me what i'll say is uh just just learn you understand and learn and learn and the thing is just to uh grab the quran read uh go to a mentor someone who can really guide you you know uh on the things that the uh, the fundamentals of just becoming a uh what do you call this a Muslim but again the thing is it should come within not a thing of being uh, forced of being in a uh, I mean being subjugated into something you understand it shouldn't be like that it should be more like coming from within you're the one who actually say you know what I want to learn this or something not just that imposing things to somebody I feel like if you just grab a Quran just like the way um, other religion grab their own books and read they get more understanding you know and also learning uh, I mean you, you see the Quran is written in, in uh, I mean it's it's more like in Arabic but there are other translation I mean not um, I mean there is Arabic translation I mean in English so you can as well just grab one and read and try to understand one but Although it's just similar as the Bible, kind of, but I think it would be more easier if you just learn the ways and how they go about their daily lives when it comes to Islam. I think that's so. Because uh, the question was, I'm trying to think, the question was, how do I convince? Mm -hmm. and, like he said, it shouldn't be a matter of trying to convince someone. Mm -hmm. I think, anyway, there's different situations where you can of course try to convince someone what i'm trying to say is the word convince person, doesn't set away yeah? no so. it's like saying i want to convince jesse to do this do you understand mm. but that thing should come from you you should really exactly. want you should be interested exactly. in this before i can think of convincing exactly. you so if you've showed interest are willing so to learn and all those things yeah. then i can say you know what let me find that one factor that's going to blow you yeah. off your feet that's going to change your perspective of this thing. That's mm. going to make you want to even dive deeper into whatever we've been talking about. It shouldn't just be, okay, this person is naive. I want them to be convinced. 
No, it shouldn't be that. I think convincing is it's on a what do you call this? Not harsh, but it's it's it's, it's on a. <laughs> It's not harsh. I mean, it's but on a. It sounds pushy. Do you understand? Yeah, it's, it's it sounds like you're being. I mean, there's a gun that has been <laughs> like held on you, and you're going to call like, someone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, don't, it's I don't think the person meant it. But yeah, like exactly. That maybe yeah, it's just maybe he didn't know what really convincing is, probably. You know, but he or did. maybe he knew, but you know, some words can 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 actually uh, vindicate you or something. Like that. But anyway. Um, but I'm also trying. I've been trying to think of a better way to put this sentence. I still can't. I mean, yeah. Because I, I think I would have most, said it the same way. Do you understand? Most, no, How no. do I convince my no, friends? No, the most appealing... Okay. The most appealing factor. That's, that's no, what I'm I mean, saying. Uh, it's, con yeah. I mean, convince just comes in. Because someone is going to be like, why do you want to convince me? Yeah. Others are going to be like, I understand where you're coming from. Yes. I mean, anyway, let's just give it like... Uh, it's a good question, though. Benefit of... Because at the end of the day... Here is someone with knowledge about this religion and mm -hmm. say and the person is saying, you know what? They feel like the most convincing thing is the fact that there's only one God. Yeah, that uniqueness of just only one God. And that makes things easier. You don't have to okay, today I pray to this God, the next day I look into this God. You want to bind mm -hmm. the gods together. Or I feel like there's confusion that comes with many gods anyway. But can I ask like you a can't question? Keep up. Can I ask you a question? Yes, we, we do understand there is only one Supreme God, yeah? Not everyone understands that. Huh? Not Ev everyone understands yes, that. Yes, yes, not everyone understands that. I mean, uh, most of them, the majority or maybe the minority, I don't know. Anyway, um, a question is this. Uh, you see, back in the, in the days, you know, our ancestors used to, there was the God of thunder, there was the God of war, there was the God of uh, rain, there was the God of, you know, there were different kind of gods. I mean... Um, up to now, the Hindus are practicing that. You know, there's a god of this, god of that, god of this. So, uh, is it is it like um, we are kind of going to more of a singularity type of thing? You know, how? Because because the Hindus still believe in those things. No, I'm not saying because of the Hindus still believe in those things. I mean, maybe they decided to stick to that kind of you know uh, belief. But I mean, if if even now when you go to they are uh, Asian texts, they are different kind of gods. So at what point did they come to us believing that uh, there is only one supreme god that we believe in, you know, which is not a bad thing. I mean, that, it's that's really... That's a very, very tough question. Yeah, because, it's, it's really a deep question anyway. Because you have to think now outside religion. Because mm -hmm. I don't think the times you're talking about was religion. And yeah. other than that, I don't know, not everyone believed the same things. Do you understand? Yes, our ancestors were doing this and that, but not... But the people after them, do you think they believed that there's all these different gods? Uh, the people today? Because at some point, I'd love to believe at some point people just said, you know what, of course maybe we have a creator. But we don't know what that creator is. Yeah. He wasn't a god of thunder, he wasn't a god of rain, he wasn't... A god of whatever gods yeah. existed. Do you understand? So they should have been also a god before that. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's I feel true. like I mean, these are just I don't know what you can call them. Is it beliefs? Is it's it actually culture? Is it what? You know? It's really mind boggling because if you look at it, you might I mean the you might go deeper and deeper and to, to a point that it's 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 just infinity. The best thing to do is I don't know how I want to say learn. But I don't know, because you discover all these other things, then what do you believe? Yeah, I mean, the What's more you learn, you unlearn believe? other things. You know, it's like we're getting into new eras of stuff. Like, for example... By evolving? Yeah, like back in those days, things were different. Now we are learning those things, we're trying to learn new tricks. You understand? New of life. Yeah, what if now, in future, it's going to be more like what I just told you, the singularity of the AI, artificial intelligence. You understand? So a robot comes in, we build a robot, and then the robot knows that it has been built by you. So the robot has all the um, all the rights to call you uh, his god. god or something. You understand? Because he commands. Creator. Yes, creator. Yes. Thank you for giving me that. Creator. Now look what happens. So uh, 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 you know, down the road, now they become more intelligent, and then they find out that so the creator himself. 
actually doesn't have uh, what do you call it um, doesn't have that longevity of living but actually dies at the age of maybe 100 or whatnot hmm so now after discovering that he's like huh so who who remains now the robot remains and then guess what the robot takes over and then now start starts uh, creating a prototype of now let's say uh, humans do you understand and then what does that even mean and what does that even drive us to do you understand so does that make the robot the right the creator or does it make it make 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 him look like um, he's still under the suit under the uh, the control of humans even after discovering that the humans actually you know die at a certain age mm. understand i mean this this things are uh, so <laughs> if anyone has answers to what he just said <laughs> feel free to start the discussion down yeah below. anyway it's just it's just a thought guys you know sometimes in life you have to ask yourself some questions but um, I, I truly love the uh, what uh, what do you call Zaki and I just mentioned I mean that's just really good oneness that the uniqueness of just believing in one God that's really amazing and that's why I really like how the Islam do their things you know they're really pretty unique the Muslims? yes yeah Muslims it's, it's, it's pretty unique to be honest yeah so guys thank you so much for being part of this session you guys are super amazing and don't forget to subscribe don't forget to go and hit that you're supposed to say all that man. make sure i'm wondering why you're talking <laughs> make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in our next reaction video deuces